When women hold on to hurt, that it will affect their sex drive. You can have an old hurt actually affect you today. Let's talk about why libido is important for our overall health. So one of the things that research shows is that if libido is not strong, it affects a woman's health. She reports having a low mood, a low satisfaction level in all of life, even sleep and uh, quality of their entire, their skin, right? Because what are we releasing when we have really fantastic sex life? That beautiful oxytocin that affects everything, right? Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's so important. And it also, you know, research also shows that relationship satisfaction is the number one predictor of a good libido. So it's not I mean, that's why I always say it's not just about hormones. If those relationships aren't good, then you're not going to have, your hormones are going to take a dive because your adrenals will be off, right? So it's looking at that, why are the adrenals in overdrive? Why is it that this is happening instead of just here's some hormones? And, and so with your research, as you've dealt into the libido story, what has been, what has been, have been some of the findings with your research? That when women hold on to hurt, that it will affect their sex drive, that you can have an old hurt from when you were five years old or an infant or 10 years old actually affect you today. And to the, the same extent, research shows that physical pain cannot be relived again over and over again, but social and emotional pain can to the same extent as the first time it was felt. So I always tell them when I'm teaching them this stuff, I say, you know, think about sitting in a garden, the day is beautiful, you're watching a hummingbird at the flower, drinking a cup of your favorite beverage, and then all of a sudden this thought comes up, right, that's somehow hurtful, and you think about somebody that you were wronged by or hurt by, and then all of a sudden the day is destroyed, right? Daniel Amen calls that the automatic negative thoughts, right? And so those ants, they come and they spoil the picnic. And so that was another thing that my research just validated again. And then that there are actually ways to come out of that and get into adaptive memory processing. And my research indicated different ways that that would, could happen. And forgiveness was a big one. Have you ever thought about forgiveness as a libido cure? Oh, absolutely. I think yes. it's one of the most important releasers of bondage, right? Right. It just weighs us down and it affects our organs. I mean, I think it relates to our pancreas very much. And right. you know, so that will relate to our blood sugar and metabolic issues. And those but how many are, other doctors well, know this, Anna? But it's We're, so important. And then gratitude, right? Just the act of gratitude. Right. And using that as part of um, as part of the process of healing that I have found so big. Yeah. But it's not taught in medical school. So right. you know, the, I don't know. Patients may think, okay, who's this doctor saying, okay, you have to journal five minutes a day at least. Exactly. exactly. But it, and helps. it does. And then another one is making sure that trauma release happens so that, you know, we now know about neuroplasticity of the brain. You have to get those little parts of the brain to synapse and communicate together. Well, and if you've got a trauma in there, you can actually change the way that you react to future hurts if you'll do the right work. And so I really like EMDR. I like brain spotting. I like clinical hypnotherapy. But any of those will work, but you just have to go do it. Yeah. So. And what about emotional freedom technique as well? EFT is great, but it doesn't get rid of that root piece, right? It gets you out of sympathetic overload when you do it so that you can get yourself calmed down in that parasympathetic rest and digest and feed and breed state. But it's not about really getting down to healing up the little kid that was hurt and finding a new connection and all of that. So mm -hmm. I love EFT though for really undo and uh, taking the, the plug out of the bathtub of that sympathetic overload, right? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, also, you know, for our listeners, chronic everyday stress, right, creates mm -hmm. that disconnect feeling. So if you're having stress, I always emphasize this, because if you're having stress at work, you're a caregiver, you've got children and carpool and juggling your work and all these things, that decreases oxytocin, that increases 
cortisol. So there's that disconnect. So, uh, you know, I, I was on a plane speaking with one of my, I actually ended up seated next to a very old time um, urologist in our area. And he was saying how burnout he is. I love, he said, I love my practice. And it, I've been in practice for 30 years and I just dread it now. And it's not, you know, it's not as it was the paperwork stress and this stuff. Right. You know, if you're responding to stress. You need some self care. You know, this, right. this trip you're on should be a vacation with your honey. Mm -hmm. And, and let's work on reducing the stress and putting some really healthy boundaries in because especially as caregivers, right. And right. physicians and, you know, with all these responsibilities and hats, that burnout leads to disconnect, leads to divorce and it's physiological, physiological, right. right? <laughs> yeah. Physiologic. And so we need to make that, we need to make that connection so that we can work through it. So what is, what is a way that you address that aspect of the so, libido and the disconnect? Well, one of the things that I'll do with people that are on that, I call it the hamster wheel, where you're going around and around and around and around and you're productivity and achievement oriented and trying to get everything done and not enough time and all those things. I mean, we can all resonate with that at some point and somewhere in our lives, right? is that ability to take some deep breaths. So one of the things that's true is you can't feel fear and you can't feel love in the same breath, okay? So a lot of times we get wound up like that where like this physician that was dreading his going into work, right? There's some fear there about overwhelm and not enjoying it. And he's losing the love that he felt for his work. And so if you know that you're tense, you're not going to be able to breathe down into your belly. So that's one of the things, if you feel that there's some fear, there's some anxiety, there's a disconnect, as you're saying, you need to get back into your body. And if you'll relax your belly, you know how we're taught that we have to hold everything in, right? Right. right. <laughs> if you relax your belly and let it pooch out and then take a deep breath all the way down so that you look like you're getting like you're pregnant, right? As on an inhale and then exhale and make your belly go all the way back towards your spine and then pregnant again and then concave. If you'll do that, then you'll feel the tension go away because you can't be tense and breathe into your belly at the same time. So that fear can go with the exhale, right? So you can do that at work. You can do it in traffic when you're in a traffic jam or you're late for an appointment. It doesn't help you if you're late for an appointment to get tense about it too, right? It's just nothing's going to change. You're already there. So you do these 10 deep belly breaths is a great way right there in that moment to do some work. Another thing is before you go to bed at night, we've got this hamster wheel, right? We <laughs> go, 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 go. And then we expect to fall into bed and just have really restful sleep and wake up refreshed. And so what I love to do is put in between the day schedule and the nighttime rest, a really nice hot bath with Epsom salts in it and lavender essential oils and some candles and some really relaxing music, no screens, right? No television, no computer, no iPad, and just soak for 20 to 30 minutes, get out and rinse, and then uh, give yourself a really warm sesame oil massage. And your pores are open and they're happy and they'll receive that oil in an Ayurvedic medicine that helps ground you. So it'll get your mind to stop doing this. And then you can go to sleep and get rest and rejuvenation and detoxification and all the things that are supposed to happen, cellular renewal, right, at night. When you rest, absolutely. And I think that deep belly breathing is great between work and home. Let's yes. do that before we cross the threshold of our home. And that's so important because we tend to yeah. bring it with us. Right. So that's well said. Now, what kind do you recommend in Ayurveda, any specific oil to massage after a nice hot bath? So I love just organic cold pressed sesame oil, the same kind that you would eat with, right? And then you can add really beautiful essential oils to that sesame oil so you don't smell like a Chinese wok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always, you know, say when we use coconut oil as a lubricant, we want something that smells good, tasteless, exactly. and odorless, or you enjoy it. So, so coconut oil is good for body after the bath too, if it's hot. So where I'm from, Sesame oil is fantastic at this time of year because it's raining in Seattle, right? And it's cold and it's windy. It might be different where you're from. It's warmer. And so when it's really hot outside, if you tend to be a body constitution that we call pitta, which is red undertones to your skin, 
and a medium build and really sharp mind and, and very, very intelligent and can be a little critical and run inflammation, you know, with inflammation, coconut oil makes a great body lotion too. So after that shower, you would do that. Uh, That sounds beautiful. This episode of the show is sponsored by Mighty Maca Plus. Mighty Maca Plus is the superfood green drink with over 30 amazing ingredients, including adaptogens and kosher organic maca from Peru that really work together to help support your body, balance your hormones, decrease inflammation, and give you that energy. Stop that three o'clock lull as well as help you get a better night's sleep. So if you're feeling sluggish, struggling with PMS, brain fog, hot flashes, low libido, or other issues, you know, it is time to try Mighty Maca Plus. It is just what the doctor ordered. To try Mighty Maca Plus risk-free, go to DrAnna.com and use Show 10 to get 10% off your first order. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here and get those notifications and comment below. Let me know your thoughts, what you loved and what your action step is.